Now let's scroll through the Goodreads to get back to this cracker because I can't even remember the name of it. Hey guys, it's Hannah and welcome to the Dyslexic Reader. Today I'm going to be discussing with you the worst books that I have read in 2018. I'm not going to show you actual physical copies of any of these books because three of them were from the library so I don't have them anymore. One of them is my boyfriend's and it is downstairs and I don't want to have to go downstairs to get it because I forgot to bring it up with me. And the other one is in this massive pile of books which is books that I have read but don't want to keep and need to be donated. And it's right here on the bottom and I do not want to have to lift all those books. So we'll just do with cover pictures for this video. These are in no particular order, these are just five books that I thought were absolutely rubbish. They were books though that I didn't DNF, that I stuck through to the end, hoping that they would be good because I had been told they had been good or I was somewhat infested to find out how it would end, but they were just terrible. Um, the first one is not going to get me a lot of love, but it was The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. This is the boyfriend's book. <sighs> this was so bad. Like, I know, I know I've know, i heard it's one of these Marmite books, you either love it or you hate it, but like I hated it, like it was so bad. It didn't make sense. It wasn't funny. It was hard. I just did not get any aspect of it. I didn't find it enjoyable, funny, meaningful, easy to read. It was just a slug. The only thing it had going for it was it was short, but it could have been shorter. <laughs> it just wasn't good. I'm not going to have a lot to say about these books because I just disliked them all. The next one, again, no order, was Shade Those Laurels by Cyril Connolly. That is the pale green book that you see down here. It was a cheap buy. I thought it sounded interesting. It was a serialised um, murder mystery that was written in the 40s and never finished. And then this guy went back and finished it. It was crap. It read like a serialised rubbish instalment in a cheap magazine, which is what it was. The writing was horrible. None of the jokes meant sense because it was written as a contemporary when my grandparents were children. So like they were talking about, oh, Mr. Such and Such did this. And probably Mr. Such and Such was the finance minister or something at the time. But I had no clue who they were talking about. And no clue what was going on most of the time. Like the right, the way they talked was weird. It was so unnecessarily pompous. And the murder mystery thing at the end wasn't even good or entertaining or made sense. And it was just all around a pile of flame and trash. I should have made tea so I could have been sipping tea. Hindsight. <clears throat> Speaking of flame and trash, white trash, a 400 year history of America or whatever it was called. I'm not even looking these up on Goodreads so if I can't remember the author's name I'm just not going to say them. Um, This was an American history book. Obviously it was meant to be a reflection of sort of white culture in America and this, especially the lower ends of white um, culture in America. I struggled with it once I got past kind of like the first, I'm not going to say chapter because it was non-fiction so I don't think it was like chapters but sections of the book which was kind of the colonial period and I'm not an expert on American history but my father is extremely into it and I would be relatively into it and I just felt like some of her facts and betrayals were just straight up incorrect. They were talking of sending, you know, how no wonder there was white trash because the English just sent over all their convicts. We sent our convicts to Australia and Ireland. The only people who could afford the boat to America were wealthy merchants. So that was just, it was just wrong. Like some of her facts, most of her facts were correct. There was a lot of opinions, which I just straight up didn't agree with. And I felt like even some of her facts were incorrect or if they were even correct, they were presented in a way that made them seem like what they weren't. So I just, oh, I skimmed through most of it. I thought it was gonna get better. There was, I can't remember what, there was one of the presidents she got hung up on and just everything like even before they were in office and after they were in office was just the fault of this particular president. And she just seemed to get like people in her mind, like the whole English <laughs> group of people or like the one president and just vilified them and just everything that happened that was wrong was because of them. It was almost done so badly it could have been funny, but it wasn't funny. And I've been ranting enough, so I'm just gonna stop and move on to the next one. 
Um, then I read a middle grade book. Um, this was a recent read for me. It wasn't absolutely atrocious, but it was a recent read. It was fresh in my head when I was trying to come up with this list, and that was Tin by Podrick Kenny. This sounded so good to me. It was like mechanical children. There's this live boy and all of his friends are mechanical and then something big happens. There was no world building. We were thrown in and the world didn't make sense. And then we were meant to, as the storyline goes on, try to like backtrack into the history to find out how we'd got here. But we didn't know where here was. And you seem to get like information dumps and then just nothing happened for ages. And the characters were no way connectable. The writing wasn't good. It was just a bit of a mess. I didn't enjoy reading it. I'm so excited to read it and I started it and I read the first couple of chapters and I was like this is not going good but I was like so excited to read it in the first place that I just pushed my way through it and I kind of wish I hadn't. No as well. <laughs> Here we go. Ma uh, Jenny Matthew. A Wolf in Hindelheim. But again was meant to be a murder mystery like we cozy town in Germany in like the 20s and somebody goes missing and the police officer is involved with his wife and like a German Midsummer Murders set in the 20s. It was... I think it was the translation to be perfectly honest with you. Like the sentences just did not make sense. I think someone had literally copy and pasted. It was originally published in German and then translated into English. And I don't know if you'd have read it in German, been it. the mystery still wasn't good and stuff, but then I missed a lot of what was going on because I couldn't understand it because the translation was so bad. It was literally like someone had copy and pasted the document into Google Translate and just been like, slap a cover on that, it will do. Like, the sentences just didn't make sense. Like, instead of saying, like, the man went to the shop, the shop was the man where he went to go. Like, it just didn't, it just was wrong. So... It was, it was like a sturdy, I can't remember who the publishers were, it wasn't like a, it wasn't an indie published book, I got it in my library, it was published by a big publishing house, like it was a well made book, it seems to have been a big seller in its native language, you know it obviously was big enough to get translated, <laughs> they just did not translate it well, it was painful and I just couldn't stop, I was like this has to get, like this has to get better like what is this like I can't believe what is actually unfolding page after page in front of my eyes but that is just genuinely how bad it was. Now I am going to say that all of these books I rated two stars on Goodreads because I don't rate books that I DNF'd and I save one stars for books that I think are genuinely like offensive or harmful in some way. Because I feel like, you know, just because I didn't really like it doesn't mean that someone else would hate it. And also, I always feel like there's some kind of value in a book. Like, uh, A Wolf in Hindelheim taught me how much importance should be put on a good translation. Especially if you're reading maybe, like, classics from a different country to research which translation you're going to read. Because it makes a hell of a difference. So I always feel like there's something to be... um learn from a book if not it's good content for these kind of end of the year videos so that is it there were all two stars for me because I really don't rate anything one star that's pretty much it comment down below and tell me your worst books of the year because I would love to look them up and just see like what the other reviews on stuff on Goodreads is and also know to avoid them because I've heard some reviews on booktube over the year of like big hype books that were very negative so that would be interesting to me not that I necessarily read hype books but it's interesting always when something is so hyped and then people don't like it I always find that very interesting so I've I've babbled enough this was kind of a ranty video so I'm going to uh, leave you here I hope you're all happy I hope you're all healthy and hopefully I'll see you in my next video goodbye <laughs>